Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Gatewood became the first woman to hike the entire Appalachian Trail alone. She became a hiking celebrity long after the automobile became the main mode of transportation in America. The public attention she brought to the little known footpath was unprecedented. Let's meet my guest, Evie Kirkwood who is known for her trailblazing adventures in nature. Aww, that's sweet. Yes, 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 you are. You're, oh, you are absolutely a celebrity <laughs> in nature. Well, we're talking about this wonderful woman who just took it upon herself to hike for five months. A determined woman. And what kind of food will we do for this? <laughs> well, you know, this is, this show is a little different, right? Because yes. we didn't have a lot of things to prepare because she wouldn't have done that on the trail. You're going to have a sampling of things that she might either forage on the trail or yeah. find in town, right? Or even carry or in, carry her, in with her bag her. on her shoulder. Exactly, and we'll talk more about that. And then I'm going to be preparing a couple of items that maybe on a hike today, we could pre prepare ahead of time granola bars and some fruit leather that are really healthy options to pack with us. Yes, you know, so we're kind of going back and forth. We we're are. going to the 50s when this was done, this walk took place. And of course, we kind of know how you can do this maybe more simply. And well, there's a lot of pre preparation ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. Uh, so tell us what you're going to do first of all. So the here. first thing I'm making is fruit leather. You can do this with almost any fruit that you like. Fruit I'm doing leather. it with apples and cranberries, which I'm going to whisk up here in the food processor. Again, this is modern day, a modern day food. I'm going to add a little honey and a little ground up uh, raisins that I've already Great. mashed. And then I'll be spreading it on a piece of Teflon coated tray for the dehydrator. So we'll be doing that in a minute. This is the first time we've had a dehydrator <laughs> on the show. <laughs> That's fascinating, great. isn't it? Yeah. So you're going to do that. I will do that, yep. I oh. think that is, I'm just learning a lot here. Yeah. I, and I love cranberries. I do too. I love honey, I, I love apples. So you've packed up your bag. You wouldn't take this on the trail, but you'd take the finished product. The finished product, right. right. And we'll show that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Grandma Greatwood's life. Yes, before we, we actually walk on the trail with her, <laughs> we have to know why this woman, back in 1955, disappeared from her family. They had all grown up. She left. She didn't tell them what she was doing. <laughs> And go right ahead. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Go you. right ahead. Hopefully you can keep talking. Well, you know, um, she she was practicing. She was walking. She was getting ready. But she came from a very difficult family life. Yes, yeah, she right? did. She did. Yep. She had a child practically every year. Mm -hmm. uh, she had eleven children. Eleven she children. waited until they had grown up. But her husband was a terrible man. He was a terrible husband. Yeah. And very, very abusive relationship. He, yes, yeah. he was very abusive, and everything he did didn't work. They were living, you know, kind of like, well, they were just at poverty just level. Just eking by. And everything yep. he did to run the farm or to buy something or prepare never worked out. So he was a big burden to her. Yeah. So when she had the chance to leave, mm -hmm. she was gone. She was on the trail. and. The family didn't know it. She never told her family. Anytime she would go on these huge long walks, she just left, which is amazing. She just it left. It really was for, for the 50s. But for the you 50s, know, right. We might compare it to our lives, but I bet there were a lot of women in this circumstance. Probably so. Sadly. And still today, too. Absolutely. And you say, why didn't she leave this abusive man? Go ahead. Yep. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, make noise. That's great. I have to keep mixing it. So basically when you're making this fruit leather, what you want to do is keep processing it until it becomes a slurry. So a slurry? Yes. I like that. Because word. you're going to want to spread it. So I'll keep doing that here while it's we're... It's not in a slurry state yet, is not it? Not yet. I'm going to add just a tad of water. 
okay. to help it, and some honey for some mm -hmm. sweetener. So I think this is great. You know, this kind of reminds me of that movie in which Billy Crystal goes on a trip at a dude ranch and he brings his coffee <laughs> yeah. grinder yes, and he, right. he starts it going and there's yeah. a stampede, the, the, the cattle take <laughs> off, <laughs> knock down yeah. the tents, you know. Yes. Uh, but I'm sure there are people making noise out on the trail. Remember at this time the trail was more of a thought. It wasn't really fully it wasn't, actualized, no. was it? No, and in fact the attention that Grandma Gatewood brought to the trail really helped make some improvements to the trail. Yes, because she was disappointed. She was disappointed. She got lost a few times. She wandered yeah. around. She couldn't find like how to get off the trail, how to get on the trail. So she really did bring some attention to the trail. And, and there were improvements made. There definitely were improvements. But uh, I I think she just, she saw a picture, I think, in a National Geographic yeah, magazine. That's right. And it made it look like, you know, you're going to go to these very comfortable shelters. <laughs> right. Well, she, they weren't even there. There were very few of them. Yeah. And she never knew what she was going to encounter. I am actually going to open up my bag here and tell you a little bit about what Grandma Gatewood would have put into this bag. You know, that she is. would have a coat. A heavy mm -hmm. coat. A heavy coat, right. I would do this. I would have this bag, a jacket in a bag. Is that Somet like a down, down yes, jacket? Yes, yes. Yep. And then sometimes she wore a beret. And so I brought my dad's beret. Fine. Uh, and she maybe had two outfits for yep. five five months of walking. She'd wash things out. She'd get caught in the rain. I mean, this was a woman who had had a hard life, so this was not difficult for her to ad adjust. The book talks about she, if she got caught in a rainstorm, she would spread her clothes out on a rock in the sun and hope that they would dry. Yes. Right? So she could put them back on again. And she ended up sleeping under picnic tables yeah. in cardboard boxes. Yeah. She would go up to a home and say, may I sleep on your front porch? And that very often led to a dinner invitation. That's right, which was a good thing. And she tried to get one meal a day. You're ready here. You've got <laughs> hey, your yeah. slurry. So I've kind of spread, these are little small batches, but I've spread this slurry out, and this will go in the dehydrator at 135 degrees for several hours. Fortunately, I've pre-made a batch, a little bit bigger batch, so I'll get this one in here and pull this one out. And yes. this is literally, of course, this was a bigger batch, but this is what it looks like when it comes off. And of course, it's on this Teflon sheet so that it doesn't stick. Isn't and then wonderful? really all you need to do to serve it is to cut it into little strips. You can actually roll this up. I'm using my kitchen shears. You can roll it up. And again, you can do this with bananas. You can do it with apricots and cherries. You can do it with almost any fruit that you like. Just this keep an eye on it in the dehydrator. Great for kids to prepare the food to oh, go on the yeah, trail. I mean, absolutely. there's so many Their things. favorite fruits, yeah. Well, I fruits. also wanted to bring out one other item. Uh, what we have here, well, I also have a flashlight, and I have my husband's Swiss Army knife, which he cleaned up because <laughs> he hadn't used it for a while, even polished it, and he showed me how to open it, but I'm not going to do it on, on air. I on might air. slice a finger. Oh, but right. this is a key piece of mm -hmm. equipment. Yep. She used a shower curtain. She would travel with a denim bag, put a shower curtain in it, and of course that was for protection. Mm -hmm. She'd sleep, if it was raining at night, she'd sleep in a pile of leaves, put the shower curtain over. I brought in a lightweight plastic tablecloth. And this, when you think about it, you could wear it, you could. you could sleep with it on you in the rain. Yep. She was a real pioneer, and she came from hardy stock, as you can see. So if you look at these things, I've got some bandages. I have, this was an essential piece <laughs> of equipment. You know, it, it was. it's a piece of equipment. Yeah. It's a cane. And she used it to hack away at underbrush mm -hmm. because there weren't trails everywhere. And one time she actually, later on in her trails and her travels, she, she hit a journalist with it because he was peppering her with questions about the trip. So in any case, this I would carry anyway on a trip or I'd have one of those modern ones today. Uh, we also have a picture, you brought tennis shoes. I did. Tell us why uh, you so brought amazingly, these tennis shoes. Amazingly, Emma Gatewood walked the trail three times. So she threw hiked three times. One time, actually, she did it in segments, so came off the trail and did another segment. But 
she wore tennis shoes. Today we have, you know, high tech oh, yeah. hiking boots and things that go around our ankles and we have wool socks. She literally walked in tennis shoes and how many pairs did she go Seven. through? Seven. Seven pairs on a walk, right? Um, in five months. Yeah. yeah. But they, they were cheaper, they were second hand. Right. They weren't good support and she had problem, problems with, with her, her feet. feet. But you know, like we said, she was determined and I think that's the whole story. You're still yes. rolling up. I, I am, I'm cutting this so that we'll have like snacks on the trail. Yeah. Yep, again, I have two different versions here. This is the cranberry apple and then this one has chopped raisins. So you can see the little dark brown flecks in so here. Clever. So clever. And so you know, what, what's nice about this is unlike the fruit leather you buy in the store which has usually corn syrup and very, very sweet, yes. you can sweeten this to taste and it also has all the fiber in it, which is also much healthier that's, for you. So it's a healthier, good. yeah, healthier option. And it's a, isn't that a beautiful color? I mean, it it's is. a beautiful my color. Favorite yeah, color. it's a beautiful color. Yes. So well, just about done with this. You're so clever, Evie. You try everything, and you're a naturalist. <laughs> you're a director. I mean, you've got your own television show. You're a busy woman. Busy woman. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit too about um, you were talking about Grandma Gatewood sleeping on the trail. Yes. So I have a friend who's actually through hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2019 and uh, along the way he has captured some great photographs and so I'm hoping that we can share them. We are going this. to. Okay. We're great. going to share the where he, I'm not sure, this this was done in the summer of 2019. 19, right. But he, he's doing the entire trail, he's doing, isn't He's through hiking, the, yep, Ed Schools, and so well, folks will be able to see some of his amazing photographs yes, from his we through hike. Yeah. I do want you to share in uh, what he is doing. And a lot of people have done this. I just. I have just a few seconds, and I want to say that I was in the, Shen in the Shenandoah River and the, the uh, Potomac River as they came together in Harper's Ferry. There was a whole bunch of Appalachian hikers, hikers? and I, we hiked with them across oh, the fun. rivers on a bridge all the way over to the other side. That's my that's, experience that's on, the, well, on the AT, as they call it, right? The AT. The right, AT, right. yes, and they were so excited. They said, we'll, be in, by, by uh, the fall, we'll be up in Maine. We'll yeah. make the whole trip. Yeah, and most I, people hike it as Grandma Gatewood did from south yes. to north, and it does end in Maine. It's 20,000 or 2,050 miles, so it's a, it's a long walk. It's a lot of walking, but she loved it. So we're gonna take a short break assemble some more food preparation. We want you to take a look at some of these fine pictures. We'll be right back. And our book is Grandma Gatewood's Walk by Ben Montgomery. And we have the director of the St. Joseph County Parks here, Evie Kirkwood, and she is conjuring up something here. What are you doing? <laughs> I am. I am going to be making homemade chewy granola bars. Again, not something that Grandma Gatewood would have taken back in the 1950s. Right. But if you are a hiker and you want some healthy food options and snacks, a homemade granola bar is really tasty. So I'm just melting some butter and some sugar and some honey together. So Great. I'm going to work on that. As you're putting all that together, I'm just going to show you uh, one ingredient that she carried with her. She had bouillon cubes, and she used to suck on these. She just I had know. them in her mouth, and and I was thinking it's, it's how awful. concentrated and how yeah. salty. But she needed the salt, and this is a real staple. And of course, if she found uh, some water and didn't even heat it up, and uh, at one point she found a can of, of soup out on the trail. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. she just yeah. picked it up and, and ate it. You know, I'll eat this, and, yeah. And, and that's the way she subsisted, uh, or existed, I should uh -huh. say. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, was, I thought she was very brave to go to, up to a home, you know, and it could look like, you know, a troll lived there, mm. and she'd knock on the door and say, can I sleep on your front On the porch? porch? Right, yeah, would or you, on your How would you table? react yeah. to yeah. that? Yeah. Now you're putting yeah. in... Uh, yeah, brown sugar and honey are both in here. So these are just going to melt uh, and oh, just over so a low easy heat. So the way yeah. you do it. Yeah. It's going to make a... Essentially, I'm making almost like a caramel, right? Doesn't it yes. almost look... You just yes. want the brown sugar to be melted. So I'm going to keep stirring here. Um, 
you know, Grandma Kate would would have she she I think just was adventurous in the sense that she just walked and didn't really plan. Today, right. mm -hmm. AT hikers really plan what they're doing. They know when they're going to stop, stop, where they're going to stay, where their next food drop is. So or a little shop they might have to get something. A little grocery, It's yep. not like, uh, you know, this is out in nature. We're by ourselves yeah. and we're cutting through the brush like she did. I know, and she would forage for things like berries. Yes. Can't do that anymore because there's so many hikers on the trail. It would just be devastated. Um, but we have a lot of things to carry now, too. Trail yeah. mix you can make. And well, yeah, what you're and doing granola ahead. bars, yeah. And dried fruit. And I, I was amazed that she carried, she had Vienna sausages. <laughs> she talks about that in the book, right? But I don't think she had this kind of top. She would have had a, a knife, maybe? Probably. That's a good point. Like, how and, did she get the can open? Yeah. And she'd have her flashlight if she needed it. Uh, but very simple, not a hundred items that, well, I need this if something happens or that. She just coped. Yep. I did bring a little <laughs> flashlight, flashlight yeah. a, a very yeah. little one. Everything is size. It has to be small. You know, one of the things that uh, was really fascinating in the book is she talks about the, all of the reporters that would trail her. They'd figure out where she was going to intersect off into a village or come across known. a road. Yeah, and that was really, really interesting. At first she was like, like well, uh, what are you doing here? And they'd say, why are you doing this? Well, it's a lark. I'm having a good I'm time. I'm walking. I'm just I'm walking. I'm just walking. And yeah. she would get annoyed. But yeah. her fame grew, it didn't did. it? It did. I'm going to go over to the oven and get out the toasted oatmeal and nuts for the do granola. Oh, so I'll yes, go over here. It. And the, the thing was, she became a celebrity. She was known all over the United States, even in other countries. And I have a picture of her that you'll see. She's carrying her bag across her sh shoulders. And you will be amazed at the simplicity of her her kit, mm -hmm. right? Everything exactly was, right. was simple, washed out her things uh, every two days. And uh, uh, she's, she became annoyed sometimes by the questions. They right. kept asking her the same questions. But she did become quite a celebrity. She was even featured in Sports Illustrated, which was a big deal. Um, was, certainly back then to be featured and people began to recognize the AT or the Appalachian Trail as something that was quite an accomplishment and really began to appreciate what it was that she'd she done. She sort of became a marketing tool unbeknownst yeah. to her or anybody else. Right. She, and people, it, as her fame grew, she'd go through a little town and there would be, what, uh, almost a hundred people yeah. waiting for her. And it, they, and which she didn't understand. She's like, well, I'm, I'm, just I'm just walking. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> and, and I think she even used her cane on a journalist at one right. point. She right. was so annoyed by the same questions. Yes. Uh, so we have all of, I have the things that we could carry, that we could stop at, at a little place in, in the uh, woods. I don't mean woods, but a little town. And people would give her a, some food to carry yeah. along. Yep. And yep. she, and they started to expect to see her. It, it was, you couldn't have dreamt this up as a marketing plan. True. True. And, because, and she became such a celebrity. Her children didn't know where she was. And people would say, well, where's your mother? Oh, we don't know. Well, wh why don't you know? And why doesn't she tell you? Well, we were brought up to be independent. Independent. Self-sufficient. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Which, you know, in this day and age, I don't know that that would happen anymore because you No, would, because you we know, have helicopter. And we all, we have cell now. phones and we can, you yes. know, text people and let people know where we are. I'm, I just saw some purple flowers and I'm going to be walking up this hill now. Yeah, right. And, uh, right. and I'll send you some pictures yeah. of where I end up. Uh, but they didn't even know and people would, the journalists would talk to the kids. What, what is she doing? Well, we don't know. She's independent. She can do what she do wants. Do what she wants. So I'm adding my melted brown sugar and honey and just a little bit of kosher salt to the oats and nuts that I toasted. And then you can add in about three quarters of a cup of anything that you would like. Chopped oh. dried fruit. This is chopped dried apricots, yes. one of my favorites. I love I love dried I love apricots. Them. And then I also have some chopped uh, dried um, pineapple. I'm going to put that in. 
Wonderful. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of unsweetened coconut. And the nice thing again is you can make this with all of your favorite foods. So basically we just mash this up and then we're going to press it in a pan. So magical the way she does it. So simply as if I do this all the time, which you <laughs> which, probably do. No, I don't. <laughs> but it's fun. It's super fun to try, right? It really is. Yeah. And again, your children could do this. This is a really simple thing. For, designing yeah. a hike in which the children make the food, yep. pack it up, and away you go. Yep. I th I, you know, it does take a lot of planning, but there are some parents that do it, and the kids love it. They really do. And I'm going to just put this in a parchment-lined pan and press it. And before you can, you don't have to bake it, which is great. Of course uh, not. All you have to do is press it and chill it for at least two hours. You press it flat. I'm going to go to the refrigerator. I have pre-made some, so I'm going to go get oh, those. Yes, you will get this. So organized. Absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, I even have some Ukrainian bread here. You know, something somebody might have given me. I slept on the, in their barn, and they said, well, would you like some bread to take along? I mean, That's they right. really helped her or they would drive her to, a, to the next place, mm -hmm. uh, and she... Uh, she must have been, she must have had an aura about her, too. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> some people well, said she looked like a fright. She didn't comb her hair. She was kind of, you know, like a troll coming out of the woods. But people followed her. And as I say, this celebrity made uh, people aware of the Appalachian Trail. She even would get she ask for help from folks along the trail. Remember crossing the river, like the river yes. was flooded? She asked the Boy Scouts who were coming along, would they help her across the trail? They literally put her on their backs Back and, carried, and her. carried across the water. And yeah. then she found out she was camping overnight with some some gang members from New York or New Jersey. Right. Yes. And they all were nice and helped. Then she later she finds out they're gang, gang members. And, yes. uh, yeah. and they probably wondered about her. her can you imagine yeah grandma gatewood and the uh, gang <laughs> gangs the she gangs had of many York. adventures along right. the trail good for her right oh yes well you know this is an adventure working with you i told you she would be bringing all kinds of her own adventures so You're these are ready set. to pop in the refrigerator these came out so look at this it's great Delicious. it really is yeah. well we're going to wrap up our our campsite here and we're going to set our picnic table Come on and join us in the woods, and you can bring your cane if you want. We'll have a good time. We'll see you in a few minutes. Well, I enjoyed this book thoroughly. Thanks to you. And you know, it's it's not a literary book. No. Uh, ben Montgomery, the author, was a journalist for a newspaper in Florida, so it's it's very journalistic in style. Yeah. But it tells a great story. Right. Oh, yeah. it's a wonderful story. And and actually, you have seen our food. You've seen what the wonderful creations that Evie came up with. This is the uh, granola bars. Granola yep. Yep. bars. Yep. Yep. And oh, and here. These, yeah, I'm the fruit, the fruit. May I try yeah, one of the these? fruit roll-ups, you bet. This yeah, is my yeah, favorite yeah. We color, got some Ritz too. crackers, which were very popular in the 50s, some they peanut butter. Were, along with Fig Newtons. And berries that maybe could have been harvested along the trail. So. I still can't imagine having a, a bouillon cube Sucking in my mouth. Sucking on a bouillon cube, oh. right. Yeah. But, do, you know, we talk about the 50s and hiking, and it was sort of a new thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it, not really. People in the past used to walk before the invention of the car. But tell us about some of the things going on in the trail you know, now. Gra right. Grandma Gatewood really launched the AT, as it's called, into a destination for hikers. And now the culture is so different. There's lingo, like slack packing. Slack packing is a day that you get to hike without a pack because a trail angel, a volunteer, will yeah. drive your pack to your next <laughs> intersection or stopping point. So there are ways now that the culture of the trail has really evolved, but it was really Grandma Gatewood that launched it into its uh, famous, uh, as a famous destination. And she didn't know she was launching it. I oh, mean, it was, no it was just amazing and how she became so, 
uh, famous for this. She was a celebrity. She didn't know it. She didn't at first didn't like being a celebrity, and then I think she enjoyed it. And a wonderful thing happened in Ohio. Exactly right. So she grew up in Ohio, lived in Ohio. Now at Hocking Hills State Park, there is a Gatewood Trail, Grandma Gatewood Trail named in her honor. And there's a walk every year if you want to go, H-O-C-K-I-N-G in Ohio. So we've had a wonderful experience. Evie, again, thank you for your suggestion fun. Fun. and your great work. And thank you. Uh, always enjoy having Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you for joining us joining us today. And remember, good food, good friends, good books make for a very interesting life. See you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.